you. You mentioned last week there were heated selection debates amongst your coaches for the replacements for the injured players. First of all, what swung the balance towards Henry Trinder uh, for one of those outside centre slots? Uh, I, th I think it was his, well, obviously clearly it was his form for Gloucester at the start of the season. You know, um, felt he started well, um, good pace, footwork, power, good defence, physicality. Um, so, you know, with, with losing Brad and Manu, we're looking for options in our outside centre channel and he, he won uh, was one of the players we felt was, was in form and deserved the opportunity. You trained with, I think, in Leeds in your very first squad in um, January 2012. What's he done in that intervening period to emerge from not even being the Saxons to get there to, to compete for I, th well, I think now he's had a consistent run of games and he has had a good pre-season. You know, he's always suffered not quite having uh, um, that consistency with injury and one thing or another. Um, he's got a little knock at the moment, but nothing serious and hopefully he's going to be back playing um, sooner rather than later and he'll come into camp and um, put his hand up. Um, it's a competitive position to, to come into. You know, when you look at some of the players we've got there, um, there's not much experience, but there's a lot of talent. And uh, it's something we're looking forward to, uh, to working with and narrowing down our selection uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Joel Tompkins is in there as well, of course, at 13 to compete with him. Another unca uncapped guy, 26 starts, I think, for Saracens in the Prem. Um, what's he shown in the low, those 26 games to think he can take this, this step up so quickly? Well, he's played some big games for Saracens and he's delivered in those big games. So he's got, clearly got the temperament, which is the important thing. He's got the physicality. Um, he understands the game now, so he's improved in that area, runs great lines. He came into the squad during the Six Nations, so he understands our systems and structures. He understands the environment. So he'll have a bit of a head start, but, uh, um, you know, we've still got some way to go before we narrow it down. But uh, he's, a, he's a genuine option for us. Luther Burrell comes in, of course, as injury cover as the 34th man. He's been a remarkable rugby story, hasn't he, that, that you know very well, and it just continues with this, this call-up for the chance to yeah, get to yeah, Australia. Yeah, and I think you know, a lot of credit should go to Luther personally for the work he's done, but also Northampton in bringing the best out of him. You know, he's always had that potential. Um, very big physical player as a young player, and perhaps a little bit inconsistent, but now he's got his conditioning sorted, worked on his skill set and, and his mental concentration and, and temperament to play in the big games. You know, he's, he's, he's done that, and... He's been one of the form centres in the Premiership so far, so credit to him uh, for what he's achieved. He enjoyed Argentina, it was a taster for him and now he wants to kick on. Your final call-up is Tom Johnson. He's been in irrepressible form for Exeter Chiefs, it's up against Sam Warburton, for example, um, last weekend in the Heineken Cup. Did you get a call from Rob Baxter saying he wants some more of his, his players <laughs> on the side? Well, I think, I think Rob, to be fair, um, quite rightly pushes his players forward and there's more than um, Tom Johnson at the moment who's playing well. and. Uh, they're all starting to push very hard now. Um, and some of the younger players in particular, you know, Henry Slades, but also Sam Hill is a standout. Jack Noel obviously made the Saxons. So there are more and more players from Exeter, and rightly so. You know, they play a great brand of rugby, very well coached. Tom particularly, you know, deserves his selection and opportunity, but the chance for him now is to get from the squad to the, to the team, and in, he knows that, but I know how determined he is. You mentioned looking at some big performances, some big players this weekend in the Heineken Cup, the last game before you meet up in Leeds. Who are you looking for to, to keep your eye on? Keep my eye on injuries first and foremost, um, uh, but um, obviously the lads um, who are getting an opportunity this weekend, so like Sir Ben Morgan, you know, it's a good opportunity for him to play. But you know, we'll watch. Um, hopeful that the English clubs do well, um, and then we'll meet up in Leeds and we'll assess everyone, and uh, we'll start building towards our games uh, uh, on the Tuesday. Alex Corbusier won't play, of course, um, this weekend. He has been flu with James Disney. Can you explain the prognosis in the immediate term for Australia and the other QB um, internationals? It's quite hard to predict with this type of... Um, I wouldn't even describe it as an injury. He's had some fluid drain. So, you know, he's, uh, he's going to um, go through a period of rehabilitation. Um, uh, then he'll do some on-field running and then he'll get back into the rugby stuff. How long that takes, um, it's hard to predict, to be honest. You know, it could be two weeks, it could be three weeks. We don't know. Um, so. There's, nothing, uh, there's one thing for sure that Northampton and ourselves will give him the best available care. He'll work as hard as he can to be fit because he's desperate to play. You know, he, he missed out on the QBEs this time last year and that was frustrating for him. Um, we'll wait and see. You know, it's not a, a definitive answer I can give you.